Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. If this is the first time you're visiting it, this is Photoshop Elements Tutorials. I'm your host Jack. Now let me first say if you enjoyed this video tutorial, at the end of the video just simply go over to the right hand side of the YouTube video and you'll see where it says more. If you click on that you can go to my website. It's Jack's Tech Corner, all one word, dot com. And look at the great DVD collection I have there for you. Uh, the DVDs are very inexpensive as you've seen in the opener. They're only $15. Or you can buy the two DVD set for $27 and have it shipped one time for only 2 bucks. So it makes it very uh, economical to get those DVDs out to you. Normally once you order, we normally ship the next day. So it's next day shipping so you get those very quick. It's so great to have those in your collection and I'm sure you'll learn a lot. And they're very high resolution, so you can see some greater uh, detail than what YouTube will actually show you. Next, just to mention, if you're doing any green screen photography work, please on my website, jackstechcorner.com, if you want to order Ken's software, Green Screen Wizard, just click on the graphics and you'll go to Ken's site and then you can purchase your software there. And he also has a lot of other great tools I see on there, a lot of green screen backdrops, and uh, it's just a great site. It's a lot of fun to uh, do green screen photography. In this video we have for you today, I want to start talking to you about doing multi multiple pictures on one backdrop and using that as a portrait. This came to me via an email. Uh, William, thank you very much for the question. Sorry it took me a while to get back to you. But William says he's interested in creating multi-image portrait or trios from scratch. He found some examples and uh, he actually sent me some. How could you use elements to do the same? After much struggling, I did create one and it was very nice, William. It was a very uh, well thought out uh, project and it looks really good. Now incorporating some of these same techniques used to make imitation Polaroid using elements which he found online. Well, I'm going to show you a very easy uh, way to do this, folks. and. Um, what a multiple uh, picture is, is you know, if you have three pictures of somebody and you want to frame those together, you can put those on one backdrop and use that uh, to have it developed or printed off and then frame that. It looks very nice. So let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. Here we have some different pictures that I'm going to be using. I'm going to select one and holding my control key down, I'm going to select the other two that I want to use for this trio. I want to use this one and we're going to use this one. Then I'm just going to simply right click on it, open that up in the full editor to get all three of those pictures opened up at one time. These are the three pictures I'd like to use. Now what we have to do first of all is create a new file. So I'm going to minimize these. I'm just minimizing these so they're down here in our bin. This is everything we're going to be working on right down here at the bottom. Now we are going to open up File, New, Blank File. And we're going to call this whatever you want to call it. Uh, trio, if you want to use Trio, uh, Backdrop, or whatever you want to use. I made this backdrop a custom backdrop. It's an 8 by 10 eight inches wide because we're going to be printing this off on landscape paper instead of printing it portrait. Eight inches high, 300 resolution, and I made sure my background um, contents is white. Let's go ahead and open that up. This is going to be the backdrop for the picture. Now the first thing we're going to do is view this full screen. We're going to fit it to the screen. And I like to start off with the center picture and then work my way out. The reason is most times when you see these, the center picture is a little larger. So all you do is left click on your bend picture and pull it up and drop it. Look what that automatically does. It automatically creates a new layer with just that picture in it. We're going to go ahead and size this picture up. Always pull from the corner and make sure it says constraint proportions pull this up we could drop it down pull it up a little bit more drop it back down a little bit more alright then we just simply click the checkbox 
The next thing I like to do to make it look more, give it some depth anyway, it's kind of flat right now, is I go into my bevels, and those can be found under Layer Styles. Click your pull down menu if you don't see them, and it's bevels. We're going to use this bevel. You can play with them all and try them out. And then simply click Apply. You can see now it gives it its own little beveled edge on that actual layered picture right there. Okay? Now the next thing we want to do is we want to create the side images. So let's go ahead and click on one of these, pull this up on a side image, and there we go. It places it right on the side for us. We can actually enlarge this a little bit, just like this, and click the checkbox. Once again, click apply for your uh, bevel. There you go, it's beveled. I got one more step before we apply that bevel. Here's the next thing we got to do. Let's pull this picture up to the right hand side. Now, you can do this by eye, and you could probably get it pretty close when you're trying the largest thing to match this one. You want them to be the same size so it looks correct. What I found to do is if you take this and drop it on top of this one, and then pull it down to cover the other one, you'll get the exact same size as that one. Then just pull it back over. All right. So a lot of great tools and elements. We're going to pull this over so we can fit everything on the screen. Just like this. Now the next thing you're looking at here is the top edges. How do we get the top edges to make sure that they're straight across? When we have this thing developed and somebody's looking, it doesn't always look like the picture is crooked hanging on the wall. There's a very easy way in Elements to do this. Simply click on View and go down to Grid. Now we have our grids up. Now we can move this to the top grid here. We actually have lines to work with, straight lines. Let's move this one here, just like that. Go back up and click on View. Turn your grids back off. Now I know they're aligned. With that done, I click Apply and add my bevel to this one. Click Apply and add my bevel to this one. All right. Now, if you want to, you can take this background and you can double click it, make it a layer, and we can color that background any color you may want to have on there. Or, you know, a lot of you watching the videos know that I actually like the gradients. I use those quite often. Uh, maybe we'll find something here to use. Just pull down across or over. Gives it a little bit more filling, right? It, it looks a little nicer that way. So that's completed. Everything looks like it's really uh, ready to roll there. Now you have to do is maintain and make sure that you're going to be able to print this thing. Let's go to print. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the size. This is the actual 8 by 10 and it's not actually fitting in the whole window here but when you print that out this will be an 8 by 10. You can also go down maybe you want to put this on your desk. You can also print this out as a nice five by seven so it works out really really well and then you would save this always remember to save as you would save it as a PSD if you're going to work on it again if you're going to do some other uh, touch-ups or maybe change the backgrounds get a different feeling for it if not save it as a JPEG file and when you do that you can put it on your thumb drive or flash drive or whatever you want to call those uh, or you can upload them to a developer and actually get that printed off and get that ready for framing. You know, and there's other stuff you can do with it. Don't ever think you can't um, add some text to the top, maybe. Um, we'll put in there 2009. I want that text to be a little bigger. Something like that. Right. Then maybe I want to give it a different style bevel. Just like that. And there you have it. That's how you would actually set that up. And um, I have to say, uh, William, thank you very much for the video idea. And I hope that this helps a lot of people out. And we will call this Trio P.
pictures is what we'll call this. So until next time, folks, as always, remember, keep those shutters clicking, keep the editors editing, and by all means, stop over to jackstechcorner.com, pay a visit to the website, and if you want, sign up for the forums. The forums seem to be going. People are starting to ask more questions about uh, Photoshop and Elements, and there's a lot of different stuff in there. And post your own questions in there. Don't be afraid to post, and don't be afraid to ask. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.